And now, the Commander-in-Chief is back. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops, the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. All right, folks, we are back. Welcome back. Welcome to the revolution, and welcome back, America. Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. Mallory Bardwell, you world-famous producer. Hey, if you don't think she's world-famous, just go to toptalk.com, and you'll see all of the conservative talk radio hosts that have made that list of being a top-notch conservative talk show host from all over the nation. And then there's a section there of top-notch producers nationally recognized. Uh, Mallory Bardwell is recognized on toptalk.com as one of the nation's leading producers. So she is world famous. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had to be out. And if you heard that show, you realize why she is one of America's best producers, because she put together a tremendous show that uh, uh, that people are still raving about. And uh, we appreciate that. We appreciate Mallory. And I appreciate you being a part of this show today. We've got another hour and a half. You don't want to miss any of it, because right now, Michael O'Shea Smith uh, from Ireland, uh, excuse me, from, uh, yeah, from Ireland, Michael O'Shea Smith, uh, he'll be coming up. And uh, <laughs> actually, his name's Michael Shoesmith. Smith, most of you know that, and he's the executive uh, editor of the P.P. Simmons News and Ministry Properties, and uh, uh, just just an amazing fellow. He is an author of several books and a uh, a syndicated blogger and uh, an entrepreneur and uh, a good dear friend of mine. He is our Canadian correspondent, hails out of Toronto, Canada, but uh, his business takes him all over the United States and to various parts of Canada, so we never know quite where he is, but we're calling him Michael O'Shea Smith today because he's got a really cool story for us. My name's Carl O'Gallops and uh, Mallory O'Bardwell and uh, because he's got a story about Barack Obama in <laughs> Ireland. Tell us about it, Mike. Well, we're all Irish today, aren't we? Is this the venerable Carl O'Gallops? It, it uh, is. is this who I'm saying? This is, this is, we're all Irish today on the, on the uh, Canadian correspondence segment today. It's uh, Mallory O'Bardwell, Carl O'Gallops, and Michael O'Shea Smith. I think my name sounds more Irish than y'all. It, it really there. does. And right after you is uh, Grace Ovoto. <laughs> Grace Ovoto. <laughs> she may have a few words to say about this, too, being Catholic herself. But yeah. uh, what this is, people may be scratching their heads down there, but what this is all about is uh, Barack Obama, he, they had the G8 summit in uh, Ireland on the 17th and 18th. Right. And uh, that is an annual meeting that uh, now it's up to 10 uh, of the world's powerful nations, they all meet and hold meetings and, and et cetera, et cetera. While Obama was in Ireland, though, this is really, this is, a, this is actually a breaking story. It's just winding up here mm-hmm. in that uh, Obama started a holy war with the Catholics, no doubt. Yeah. Because he was speaking in Ireland this week, and, and Obama stated that Catholic schools were divisive. And he says, if towns remain divided, if Catholics have their schools, and buildings, and Protestants have their schools and buildings, I mean, we can't see ourselves in one another, and fear or resentment are allowed to harden. That, too, encourages division and discourages cooperation. Excuse right. me? Right. Excuse me? Right. Excuse uh, pardon me. me, but who do you think you are exactly? Right, especially in Belfast, Ireland. Oh, my goodness. There was, now, people are, are, are launching a backlash against Obama. This, is, this could be huge. Right. This could be good. Because now, now this thing is spreading. I mean, me, I mean, perhaps people haven't heard about this, but this thing is spreading to where everybody will have heard about this by the end of next week, I promise. Because now the, uh, the Catholics are, are fighting back around the world. In fact, Catholic groups are now calling on, are now cal- calling on Nancy Pelosi to renounce uh, abortion or get out of the church. Right. I right. mean, that's amazing, right? Yeah, no, that is amazing, yeah. This is, this is huge because um, Catholics have a big voice uh, in American politics. Right. And, and, uh, and uh, now, I mean, the, 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 the absolute nerve, the gall of this man to go into a foreign country and say, look, you guys have to stop with the Catholic school systems here. Right. This has to stop. Right. Now, that, I, I, I see this as a personal slam because uh, ca- the, the uh, school system in Canada is split in half, secular and Catholic, right. which is odd because you know, we're, we're, we're still subjects of the crown in Britain, which you know, we should be Anglican, essentially. Right, in but, Canada you are. Yeah, when you say we, remember we've got mainly an American audience here. Yeah, so. uh, okay, <laughs> well, it, I live in Canada. I am yeah. a Canadian correspondent. And, right. Uh, <laughs> right. Here in Canada, we have, we have essentially a split school system, the Catholics and the, uh, and the, uh, you know, the secular school system. Right, right. 
I still, you know, I've lived here, I'm in my mid-40s, and I still haven't wrapped my brain around I know, that, I know. But, yeah. Well, you know, I was just looking at the Scottish Catholic Observer, after uh, Obama spoke, said the U.S. president has made an alarming call for an end to Catholic education in Northern Ireland. That's, the way, that's the way they translate it. it said I know. That, I, I, it's just amazing. What, what gall? Uh, um, he said, just imagine the reaction if Obama had visited the West Bank and said something like this about Islamic education. Right. I mean, I mean, that's right. I mean, that's the same way to think about it. What gall to go to a foreign country and tell them uh, how to educate or not educate their children and what religion they can use and what religion they can't use to do it. I mean, the, now the rest of the world is finally getting a taste of what we have been having to swallow for five years. Well, I mean, people need to, people need to just, just clear your mind of everything else and... Put your thoughts on this scenario. Here is a man. He, I mean, this guy did not ever run for office in Ireland, right? Yeah. yeah. No, that's right. <laughs> right. Here's a guy who is, who is in favor of, of partial birth abortion. Right. Who, who is in favor of homosexual marriage. Right. Going to a country that, uh, that, is, uh, that is staunch Catholic yeah. and staunch Protestant. And deeply against those two topics. Exactly. Going into that country and saying, you guys need to shut down your Catholic school system. Right. Excuse me? Right. You need more like my philosophy. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's unbelievable. But here, here we have this picture, uh, which has emerged, of the, the gang of ten walking out of the G8 summit. And these are the ten leaders. This is, a, this is an astounding picture, yeah. honestly. If people want to email me, ppsimmonsatlive.com, I'll send you a link to the picture. And here, is, here are the ten leaders of the world, right? Right. We've got, we've got uh, Putin there. We've got Merkel. We'll talk about Mer more on Merkel at the, in the next segment. Uh, but all the world's leaders, um, Great Britain is represented, you know, all these leaders. And, uh, and there's uh, poor Stephen Harper. Right. <laughs> He's... He's bringing up the rear, but Stephen Harper is the Prime Minister of Canada, and uh, there's Mr. Harper. Now, every, all, every one of these leaders, now, now the thing, uh, Mr. Obama, he's walking right in the middle of the pack, right in the front. He's leading the pack, okay? Mm -hmm. There's poor Mr. Harper. Now, Stephen Harper is the Prime Minister of Canada, and he is a staunch conservative. He's done everything he can to halt the, the wave of liberalism that, that, that began its, its onslaught on Canada back in the 60s with uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau. Now, uh, during, uh, during uh, uh, Chrétien's uh, prime ministership here in Canada, homosexual marriage w was allowed. It was forced on the Canadian people by the Supreme Court here. That's how that happened, mm -hmm. all right? And you guys are facing that today. You yes. guys are facing the exact same scenario we went through 20 years ago. Yep. Right? So Stephen Harper, a staunch conservative, he comes up the ranks, he becomes prime minister, and he has halted the, the liberal wave that has swept over Canada. And we praise God for Stephen Harper for that and for the fact that he is a staunch supporter of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he came out recently and he said, look, and he's speaking to the world leaders, he said, look, you guys are not supportive enough of Israel. This has to stop. We have got to throw wholehearted, full-bore support for Israel. We've got to do that now. This was Stephen Harper. Right. Okay? Now, here comes this picture. <laughs> this is an epic picture. People will need to understand all of what I just said to understand this picture, because here's all ten of these leaders walking toward the camera, all in a line with, with the thing leading them. And there's poor Stephen Harper with his head down, staring at his boots, mm -hmm. and he looks like he is completely ashamed to mm -hmm. even be in the picture with these people. Right. It's an amazing, that picture, you know the old saying, a picture says a thousand oh, words? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That picture speaks a thousand words, yeah. brother. Yeah. And oh. I'm afraid Harper's on his way out. I'm afraid the libs have gained enough support now where they may be able to get rid of him soon. I hope not. I pray not. I but, pray not. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's an epic picture. Well, but here we, have, here we have the thing in, in, uh, in Ireland making a complete fool of himself, yeah. honestly. I, I think so. And, and listen, to throw a little balance, and plus I want your, your uh, observation of this, uh, James Salt, who is the director of uh, a group called Catholics United. Now, they are a liberal, liberal faith group. They're not associated with the Vatican, even though they have that name Catholic in there. Okay. Uh, Catholics United, uh, James Salt, and, and they are huge Obama supporters. Yeah. So, so when asked to comment on, on uh, Obama's, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what you would call it, his atrocity, 
Nazi uh, going to Northern Ireland and basically trashing the Catholic Church and Catholic education. Here was Salt. Salt said, well, the real story here is how far the Catholic far right will go to disparage this president. Simply put, Obama's detractors have taken an innocuous yet important comment out of context as a way to score cheap political points with an electorate wow. that doesn't fully understand the context of religious education in Northern Ireland. Uh, now, you talk about one travesty on top of another one. Oh, when you take what Obama said and then take James Saul's, what, do, do you have a comment on it? <laughs> well, I mean, there are, there are actually legitimate uh, Catholic groups uh, made up of legitimate priests right. who, who are coming out and saying, uh, look, uh, we we uh, we uh, wholeheartedly reject uh, Barack Obama's assertion that Catholic school system should shut down in Ireland, and we are now uh, coming out and saying uh, that uh, the, all of the Roman Catholic. Now, Barack Obama is not a Catholic, right? Right. right. So the the Roman Catholics they don't have much sway over Obama personally, but they do have sway over the Roman Catholics in the political system, like Joe Biden, like. Right. Uh, Nancy Pelosi and Pelosi, they're saying, look, you have got to renounce abortion and uh, homosexual marriage, or you have got to renounce your membership in the Roman Catholic Church. That's the bottom line here. Right, right. Now, now, will we ever get to the? Will we ever hear the backstory on that? I mean, will we ever hear if they will they throw her out of the Roman Catholic Church, and will we hear about that, or was that just some empty threat? Has she responded to that yet? I, I suspect that uh, there, we may see an excommunication here, and it may be very public. Wow. I don't know. I wow. don't know. We may have to get uh, Dr. Grace's. Mike, did we lose you? We may, we may oh, have to get go. Dr. Grace's view on that, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. All right. We lost you for just a moment. All right. But, but, but we heard you. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, I, I think I'll ask Dr. Grace that if I can remember to do so when she comes on. I tell you what, though, Mike, let's take a quick time out. When we come back, I'm going to ask you about Obama in Berlin because that was another debacle, wasn't it? Big stuff out of Berlin. People will be blown away by what happened yep. in Berlin. It yep. is amazing stuff. Do not change that dial. This is amazing stuff. We saved the best for last. Absolutely. I can't wait. Folks, you're listening to Freedom Friday. With Carl Gallops, our guest this afternoon, Michael O'Shea Smith, out of Toronto, Canada. We're going to talk about Barack Obama in Berlin when we come back. You don't want to miss this segment. <laughs> 